me 10 years ago, even further, when I got my $500 and went off to college and for everybody who received that money, laundry, 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 laundry. It's not, it's not free in college. They don't tell you that and, and it hurts. So please keep your pockets good. Um, I also want to highlight the young piano players. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. That moved my heart. It really did. It really did. And the reason why is because we watch them in process, right? We watch them maybe stumble and then start over, stumble and then start over. And I think um, what, I, I'm teaching a, a Shakespeare class here in, in Houston. And what I'm learning from these kids is we're so focused on the product all the time. We just want to present this perfect product all the time. And what that does is it cuts off communication. It cuts off humanity. And I'm very blessed that I have a father who shows me that he's a human. He's not perfect, he's a human. So I can go to him and go, Dad, I'm struggling with this right now. And we can talk and we can be there. And so, yes, I wanna speak to our children, but I also wanna speak to our parents and our supporters of these children. Allow your child to be imperfect. Allow them to fall on the floor. Allow them to get bruised. Allow them to stumble. Allow them to look ugly. Allow them to look dusty and dust them off. Because if you won't go to your parent, when you're at your lowest, then what, what is the relationship? Who do you know? You know, me and my father really know each other, and I, and I praise God for that. Thank you. Thank you, my father. Thank you, because he does the work for that. So for everybody else, I really want to encourage that. And, uh, and you'll see how the piece is representative of that as well. And I was, again, I was inspired by the piano players and I wasn't gonna sing because I can't sing. I wasn't, I wasn't blessed with that. That's not in my, my, my blessing bag, I think. Uh, but I really like this song and I think it, uh, it leads really well into the poem. And so in, in the spirit of being in process, I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna figure it out, you know? And then get to, the, and get to the piece, so thank you so much. This is a piece by Joseph Solomon. I didn't write it myself, Joseph Solomon. It's called Shadow of a Doubt. And I'm entitling the entire performance, Who Do You Think You Are, in a twofold way. Who do you think you are to question God? And who do you think you are that he won't do everything for you? Thank you. Say something, I'm giving up on you. I'll be the one if you want me to. Anywhere I would have followed you. Say something, I'm giving up on you. I remember my little niece ran up to me and told me, we learned about Jesus today. And I could tell by her smile that she was so excited to learn about this man that she did not quite know yet, but she knew without a doubt for it to be true because after all, mommy said so. And that was the first time I looked into the eyes of a child and I envied them. Because she had no idea what it feels like to doubt. What it feels like to have your entire belief system overloaded with skepticism. To never know the day where you can live beyond the shadow of a doubt I've lived in its darkness for so long. It seems like I have all the right questions and never enough answers. And my faith is sometimes small enough to fit in the cracks of my palms. God, every night when I lay my head down to sleep, the city of my mind is attacked with a legion of questions, threatening the living rooms of my sanity and holding them hostage. Can you help me? I remember my grandmother laid in a hospital bed like a bus stop waiting for God to come pick her up. And I have never seen so much pain and so much confidence living in the same eyes when she said to me, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know who I belong to. And I was so happy for her. And I somehow wished that before she passed, she could pass some of that confidence in God to me, like an old family picture. 
I remember sitting in the back of a cold sanctuary crying because I wanted so desperately for what the preacher was saying to be true, but my doubts were preaching a sermon of their own and the streams of my eyes became oceans of frustration. I remember being in a college classroom and the only thing that was being tested was my faith in God. The only thing that was passing was my hope. Me in a backpack full of fear and nowhere to go. No one to help me unpack. I sleep. I sleep, but I never rest. These lines around my eyes are not wrinkles. They are maps that show you the winding roads that lead to my pain. I'm tired. I'm tired. And I'm longing for the day that I can place my fingers in his nail-pierced hands. Because honestly, I've thought about quitting. But where will I go? Back? There's no home for the living in the land of the dead, so I keep pressing forward. So today I have faith, but I can't make any promises about tomorrow. Honestly, I'm surprised I've held on this long. God, just... Let me know I'm not crazy. Let me know I'm not making friends with these walls when I pray. I'm not questioning you. I just have questions. Don't leave me. Don't. Don't leave me. My child, my child, when it feels like you have all the right questions and never enough answers, and your faith is small enough to fit in the cracks of your palms, I told you faith the size of mustard seeds can rearrange whole landscapes and turn mountains into open highways. Faith comes by my word. So maybe you've cuffed your ears, my child. Don't be childish. And consider that child whose faith maybe hasn't quite learned the definition of impossible. Have your questions. I'm not telling you to have a blind faith. I'm telling you to consider the blind men that had faith and believed in my word before they could even see me. Consider the birds that eat from my hands and do not fall from the sky unless I consent it. So how much more will I love the ones I died for? Before you doubt me, doubt your doubts. Doubt your doubts. And you will see that they are just as empty as the tomb I walked from. Truth is... You know I'm here. You know my truth. And you're scared. Scared of what that means. Scared of what that should cost you. That one day they will all laugh at you. Laugh you right out of those classrooms and scorn you out of that sanctuary. But my love serves as an eviction notice to anxiety and fear. When they cast stones, my love cast out protection. I am the author and the finisher of your faith. I am the one. I am the one that will give you the courage to stare death in the face and say how dare you try to scare me. I know who I belong to. And when it feels like you are drowning, when it feels like you are drowning in a sea of your questions, I am there. I am there. Like when I drowned in the Red Sea of my blood for you, And these hands which took holes will hold you. And when I told you that I love you forever, I meant it. Look at these rings. We are married. 
for better or for worse, through sickness and in health, through faith and through questions, till death brings us closer. You are mine. You are mine. And I am yours. I promise. Thank you.